Hello, this is William Liu from Wilson Presbyterian Church. I wanted to talk about the life lessons that we can learn from sports. Volleyball is my favorite sport. Basketball, I play the most because it's one of the few sports that you can play all by yourself. So I was growing up, I used to take my basketball and dribble down the hill to Alpine Recreation Center and just shoot basketball myself and then maybe play in a pickup game. But volleyball is my favorite and I want to share with you that I've been on teams where the best player simply quit after two games because we lost two games and it couldn't go to playoffs and he just quit on the team. Sometimes we go to high school and there's a new coach and we say, what happened to the old coach? And they say, well, he, we, the old coach quit and it's because we had a losing season. And so it's really hard to build a program when the coach quits or when uh, some of the best players quit simply because you lose. The old saying says, when the going gets tough, let the going, when the going gets tough, let the tough get going. Let me read to you James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man who perseveres in the trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. This word perseverance, blessed is the man who persevere. It's a compound word in Greek, hupomeno, and simply means to literally stay under not to quit or not to get out from under the trial, but to stay under the trial. Blessed are the man who perseveres. The word perseveres is in the present tense, so it can be literally translated, blessed is the one who continues to persevere, who doesn't quit, who stays with it, continues to persevere to the very end, because he will receive the crown of life. The word crown here is stephanos, as opposed to diadem. This is the wreath of leaves that they would place on the victor who would win the race in the original Olympic Games. This is the crown that you earn. He will receive the crown of life if he perseveres to the end. I hope and pray that you, that God will give you the Stephanos or the crown of life because you did not quit on Jesus and quit on your faith and quit in loving him and serving him. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you for Jesus Christ who did not quit, but endured to the very end and died on the cross for our sins. Would you give us that same kind of faithfulness and dedication to love you and serve you to the very end. We thank you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
Title of our message is Fire from Heaven, and our passage is Luke 12, 49-56. At 5.012 Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday, April 18, 1906, Northern California was struck by a terrible earthquake, estimated magnitude of 7.9 on the Richter scale. Devastating fires broke out in San Francisco and lasted for four days and four nights. Over 3,000 people died. Over 80% of the city was destroyed. This was one of the worst, deadliest earthquakes in the history of the United States. Even though the earthquake and aftershocks caused a lot of damage, the fires that burned out of control caused even more damage than the earthquake did. Some people estimated that 90% of the destruction was because of the fire, not because of the earthquake. Within three days, over 30 fires caused by the ruptured gas mains destroyed approximately 25,000 buildings on about 500 city blocks. And again, over 3,000 people died. I want us to understand that we don't understand fire as much as the people in the first century and the time when Jesus spoke to them his listeners understood fire much more than we do. We see fire maybe in the fireplace or in a candlestick, but those people experienced fire because they didn't have electricity. And at night, the only light they had came from the flames of oil lamps. People cooked by fire and there was smoke and sometimes the fire would catch on like a grease fire. Sometimes somebody would knock over oil lamp and it would like start a fire in the house. And so they knew how destructive fire could be. They also knew that fire had positive values as well. Uh, food tastes a lot better when it's cooked over fire. They understood that fire could temper metal tools and knives and make them hard. They understand a potter could shape something out of clay, put it in the kiln and it would harden and then become something useful. Jesus uses fire in this gospel and he says something really radical and I hope we don't miss it today. Let's look at God's word. Luke 12 49 Jesus says I have come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled but I have a baptism to undergo and how distressed I am until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. 
Let's look at our first point in the next slide. Point one, God often reveals himself through fire. Exodus 3, verse 2. There the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. Verse 4, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Then God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Next slide, please. Point one, God often reveals himself through fire. Exodus 3, verse 2. There the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. Verse 4, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Then God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Next slide, please. Our first point is that God reveals himself through fire. And our second point is the gospel of Jesus Christ demands radical dedication. You don't just go to church for two hours and then say you're a Christian. It's much more than that. To be a follower of Jesus Christ demands everything. Luke 12, 48b. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Verse 51, Jesus says, Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. For the most part, the idea of radical Christianity has been lost. Most people think of Jesus as the Prince of Peace. They think, well, I can get forgiveness and peace and uh, personal healing in Jesus, and we can have peace in the here and now, and then there's a ticket to heaven in, if I die, if and when I die, when I die. But we've forgotten that when Jesus introduced the kingdom of God to people in a historical time and place, it was a radical idea. It was so radical, they crucified him. The Romans didn't like Jesus having so many followers and wanting to change individuals and change society. We have to remember most of the disciples, most of the apostles suffered violent, horrible deaths because they wanted to change society. Pliny, the governor of a province in Asia Minor, wrote a letter to the Roman emperor saying he didn't know what these Christians believed exactly. But they were the most rebellious and willful, obstinate, disobedient people he had ever encountered. And therefore, he put some of them to death just because they were so rebellious. They rebelled against the values of the Roman government. Seminary professor Stanley Hauerwas started his semester in one of his classes. And he read a letter from a parent to a government official. The parent co is complaining that the family has paid for the very best education for their son. Then the young man got involved with a weird religious sect. The parent pleads with the government, do something about this group that's ruining his son's life. Dr. Harawas explains, the parent is not complaining about the Hare Krishnas or the Moonies or some other cults. The professor took different parts of letters written to the Roman government in the third century about this weird religious group called the Church of Jesus Christ, the followers of Jesus Christ. Next slide, please. Our third point is that God wants us to be on fire for Jesus Christ. Revelation 3.14, to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, these are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. This is a picture of, of many people in the church today. People think Christianity is to, is to make me feel good about myself. It's 
they have completely the wrong idea. Being a Christian means revolutionary and radical change. Sometimes the community wants the church to be uh, somebody in the background, quiet, and never make a fuss, never cause any trouble. But Jesus said he came to rain fire from heaven. Every once in a while, someone catches on fire for God. Someone realizes that uh, life is more than just buying things, buying things, buying things, buying things. I talked to someone once and uh, their, her husband was an avid fisherman and he bought a boat. And of course, then you got to buy a truck to be able to haul the boat to the lake. And then she says, well, in another year or two, he's going to trade this one and buy a bigger boat. And then after that, he's going to trade this, the medium boat and buy an even bigger boat. And then he's going to have to buy a bigger truck. She says, I, I know how it works. Well, as a Christian, hopefully we catch on fire for Jesus and we realize that life is not just buying things for ourselves. Life is not just enjoying for ourselves and accumulating things. Being a genuine follower of Jesus Christ means we're to love God and to serve Him and serve others. Christianity is not just to make ourselves feel good. There was a person named Jim who caught on fire for Jesus Christ. He was a successful businessman in town. He belonged to the church, but he never took it seriously. He went because his wife kind of wanted him to go. Wife says, oh, we got to send the kids to Sunday school. So we have to all go as a family. And so he went along and he just kind of went on Sundays and he didn't really get involved because he wasn't, I don't know, probably wasn't even really a Christian. Well, some of the men in the church invited him to a weekend retreat because these people were active in the spiritual renewal movement, kind of like revival. And so they said, come on, come on, come on. We're all going. We want you to go and come with us. You really like it. You enjoy it, they promised. And so he kind of didn't want to go, but they kept asking him, asking him, so he went. He didn't really feel that the church or Jesus had much to offer him because he was successful and he had money. But he went to this retreat. He didn't enjoy it at all. It was a terrible experience. Why? because he was embezzling money from the company where he worked. They talked a lot about Jesus and his words. And for him, it was not only like the preacher was speaking to him directly, but it was like the word of God was raining fire from heaven on him and on his embezzlement. Well, at the end of his retreat, he became a Christian, he confessed his sins. So we went, when he went to work on Monday morning, he went to the office of the owner of the company where he worked. He sat down and he told them everything. And he said, I've been, you know, embezzling, stealing money. And I have a record of it and I'm going to pay you back. Well, the owner was hopping mad. So on the one hand, he was happy he was going to pay the money back. But he was mad because he'd been stealing for years. And so he pressed charges and Jim had to go to prison. When he came out, he became one of the leaders of the spiritual renewal movement because God put his heart on fire and now he was genuinely a Christian and he was a man of integrity. He wasn't going to embezzle or steal money anymore. This kind of radical faith, radical Christianity can change our lives. Are we open to the fire that God rains down from heaven. In our next slide, we read 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, 6. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This phrase, your faith tested by fire, gives us a picture of a blacksmith. He takes the ore from the ground. In the ore, there are there's a little bit of gold, but it's also a lot of impurities, a lot of dirt in it. He puts it in the crucible and then he puts it in the kiln. He puts it in the hot fire and the fire burns up the impurities. Then he takes it out with the long rod and then he looks at the ore 
and says no there's still dirt in there i see a little bit of gold shining through and he puts it back in the fire and he keeps doing this until all the dirt and all the impurities are all burned up then he takes it out and then he can see pure gold and then he can look at the gold and see his reflection jesus is the goldsmith the metal worker jesus puts our faith in the fire that trial might be loneliness or depression or being sick there are all sorts of different trials we go through but jesus lets our faith go into the fire so that our faith would be tested by fire and would be refined and purified so that other people can see jesus in our lives let's bow our heads and pray gracious loving heavenly father again we want to thank you for jesus christ who died on the cross not only that we might go to heaven but that we might know god the only true god through jesus christ and because we know you have a relationship with you we pray O oh lord that you would set our hearts on fire to love you and to serve you and serve others help us lord to love you every day try to make a difference in this world other people can see that jesus is alive and real in our lives we thank you and pray in jesus name amen